So I was in Columbia, Missouri um, a couple days off, so I kind of just took the couple days to get caught up on work. But uh, one of the things I'm trying to do while I'm on the road is mildly stay fit. Um, so I've been doing some exercises and things like that, but whenever I get the opportunity to go on walks, um, I go on walks, right? Like that's sort of a very easy thing to do. It's a good good exercise for me. Uh, it's cardio. I like it. And it gets me to like see shit around the town that I'm in. So whenever I get the opportunity to do that, I try to do that. So I went for a walk and uh, uh, in Columbia, Missouri. And I was strolling around and I got to like the campus part of it and I was like, okay, this is a bit too college-y for me. So I kind of walked off the, uh, the beaten path and, uh, and wound up, uh, wound up finding this Islamic center. Uh, and I thought it was a mosque. I, I, I think I was wrong because the, the gentleman that I ended up talking to kept calling it the Islamic center. Um, and here's the thing before we get into the main part of the story I'm not here to like shit on a religion I'm not here to like uh, proselytize or whatever like I'm just here to tell you guys what happened and throw like the, and, and a couple things that I believe in right but I'm not like trying to shit on uh, anybody's religious beliefs or anything I, I'm, I'm more I guess curious to have a minor debate maybe but yeah I'm trying not to shit on this person's belief. It, it was just sort of a very strange experience. Um, so I walk in and, uh, you know, take your, take your shoes off. And then I kind of walked in and, and people were doing uh, some prayers. So I went into the main room and I just kind of sat down in this, in this row of chairs. Um, and there's an old man and he was doing his thing, and he stood up, and he turned around, and he saw me, and he, and he waved, and I said, hello, you know, and he kind of gave me the salam alaikum, and I said, salam alaikum, uh, I think the technical thing I'm supposed to say is malikum e salam, but I did not do that to when, when I saw this old man, and he came over and asked me my name, and I introduced myself, and he started asking me some questions, you know, like, what's my background, so I was kind of honest with him, you know, I was just like, I'm just a visitor, I'm passing through Columbia, I don't live here, um, uh, and, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm agnostic, that's my belief, uh, but I grew up Hindu, I'm from, I'm originally from India, and he was, and he looks at me and he goes, you're a jewel, and I was like, what? <laughs> and he's like, you're a jewel, you're, you don't know, um, you're, you're here to find out more about Islam. And I was like, yeah, I, you know, I, I, I have never been in a mosque before. I've never been in uh, Islamic center, t this type of Islamic center before. So I was just curious. I was curious to see what it was, uh, was like inside and, uh, and like learn a little bit more. And I think the mistake I might have made was to, uh, <laughs> I should have been like, yo, I'm not trying to join your religion. Uh, I'm just curious and want to know like what your perspective on this is um just so I can like get a little bit more informed but like I am not here to join your religion and I, and the reason why I say that is because man he tried to convert me real fucking quick right where he was just like you get to learn about Islam and you get to you get to spread the word and I was like oh uh, all right, um, I don't know, uh, why don't you, like, and he's like, do you know the story, and I was like, why don't you tell me the story, right, so he starts telling me the story, and, and a lot of it is very similar to, like, other Abrahamic and Judeo-Christian religions, you know, God created man, uh, man, he told the angels that, like, man is the most special thing that he's gonna create, and, uh, and, and, like, that's why we're here, because we're his favorite, and, uh, and, you know, um, God put this thing, uh, about overcoming challenges in us, so, and then he, and then he was like, when he put that in us, he had to create challenges for us, so that's what he did, 
but each of these challenges is meant to make us better and smarter and more equipped to deal with shit. That's why there are diseases, that's why there's cancer, that's why there's all these other things. Um, that's why there's challenges to your faith, because it's supposed to make your faith stronger every time you overcome these challenges. And he's kind of giving me the spiel, and I was like, yeah, man, I've kind of heard all these spiels through, like, Christianity and Catholicism and Judaism, and even, even, like, Hinduism has some of this stuff. And I was like, all right, so there, so what's the special thing here, man? Like, what, you know? So, um, he was like, so, you know, so you believe in God now? And I was like, well, I'm agnostic, so I, I, I kind of don't. But I'm curious to know, like, what you believe in. He was like, well, well, no, 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 hold on. You have to believe because... And he kind of went into, like, here's why you need to believe, right? I have proof. It's like, oh, man, don't say babies. Because babies are just proof that you fucked, like, twice. You know, like, that's kind of... Babies are just proof that your dick works and your, you know, your, your lady parts work. That's really it uh and he was like no it's like the grand design of the universe he kind of used the grand design of the universe theory on me and he was like well well look the universe is so huge and it's so big and it and it everything has to work perfectly because if it doesn't it could all collapse if one star isn't very specifically placed in one position then the whole universe could collapse. If we weren't at, you know, if we weren't uh, created by these incredibly, like, intricate circumstances, then everything could just fall apart. So somebody has to take care of that. Somebody has to be putting things in perfect place. And that's God. God is the person that's putting things in perfect place. It just makes sense. And I was like, sure. I was like, you know, I I get it. I just don't think I call that God. And he's like, what? And I was like, yeah, man, I don't call it God. Like, I think there's a force in place. And he's like, no, 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 it's no force. It is the almighty creator. It is the cre- It is divine. It is the creator. And I think I started frustrating him. And I was like, no, dude, I just like, I don't believe in this deity this all-encompassing deity that is like weirdly obsessed with us so I kind of like was gently trying to get it to him and he's like no god is like god's the manager of the universe and I was like god if you're saying it's this almighty divine creator why is he the manager like he's just like the middle class fucking like he's not even the ceo of the universe like how is he the best thing, right? Like, I, like the creator of the entire universe is relegated to, like, the same position as some fucking person that runs in Chili's, you know? Like, that's what you're saying God is? Like, come on, bro. Like, God's better than middle management, you know? Like, God, God, God makes the big decisions. Isn't that what you're saying? Like, he's the divine creator? So he's got to make the big decisions if that's the case. So... I had this big conversation to him with him and he was like and then he started talking to me about like the afterlife right like we have to do good things god has rules in place for us so we have to follow these rules in order to get to paradise if we make mistakes and and then we get punished with hellfire and i was like huh okay um and i was like what about forgiveness and redemption he's like no no, no god does that too god does that too He's very forgiving. Like, if you realize what you did and you, uh, you know, apologize and go with that, like, you know, you you, you get forgiven. And I was like, okay, um, that's cool, that's cool. And I was like, yeah, it's, I just, I don't think I call it God. I think, you know, when you go, when you look at the patterns of things microscopically to the macroscopic, like, there are specific ways that everything operates And he's like, yes, and God does that. And I was like, he's like, don't you believe? I mean, come on, that just makes sense. And I was like, it doesn't because it could be a lot of different things. And it might not be something that we are like meant to understand. 
Uh, and I was like, I don't know what it is. And he's like, it's God. And I was like, I don't know that though. Like, there's no concrete proof to me that there is. And I started, I think I started frustrating him and, uh, and he wanted me to like stay for their prayer service at 9.30 in the evening. And I was like, eh, I'd rather, I kind of have to walk like a mile and a half back. So I don't want to like stay out too late. Um, Cause I know my couch surfer has to go to bed and stuff. So I was like, hey man, I gotta get going. And he was like, well, I'll give you, I'll give you some food. Like, you want some dates? I was like, do I want some dates? He's like, yeah, you know, like the food. And I was like, oh, uh, sure. So he's like, okay, let's go to the kitchen and see what we can find. I was like, okay. So I walked to the kitchen and as we're walking down, he's, he's talking about people that stray the path of God. And he's like, it is the Islamic mission to get people back on the path of God. Because God has an invitation for all human beings to enter paradise. So when when somebody has strayed the path, it, it is our mission to like bring them back to the path, is what he told me. So he's like, okay, that's interesting. And he's like, and you can repent. You can come in and be like, oh, I, I messed up and I made mistakes and here's all of my mistakes and in my head I'm like kind of like confession like you guys you guys have confession just like the Christians do that's just like I, I did a wrong thing okay you're forgiven cool so next week if I do the same thing it's fine I don't really have to like learn <laughs> you guys have that thing where you get to be like, because God just wants people in paradise. Like why? Like I feel like God's just like this lonely dude. <laughs> like, he's like, I just want friends, but I don't want to, I don't want them to think that they're just like invited. I mean, they are invited, but they can't just show up. Like they have to like do things. Like they have to do my tasks. I want my friends to do tasks for me. <laughs> It's just like, chill out, bro. Maybe you'd have more friends if you stopped asking them to do stuff for you all the time. They gotta sacrifice stuff! And then, and then they get to hang out with me for eternity. It's like, wow. You need to calm down. You are taking this friendship business far too seriously, I think. But, so we're walking down to the kitchen. And, uh, he's, and then we get, and then he was like talking to me about like repentance and stuff like that. And I was like, all right, it's starting to get a little weird. <laughs> so he looks around and he's like, oh, we, we had so many dates. We had so many dates. I don't know where all the dates went. And I was like, man, it's cool. Like you don't have to do that. And he's like, no, no, no. I, we have to give you something. You're a guest. And, you know, you can't just walk out of there empty-handed. And uh, he looks in the fridge and he was like, you want an egg? I was like, do I want an egg? He's like, yeah, I'll give you an egg. Take an egg? I was like, yeah, all right, I'll, <laughs> I'll take an egg, man. Like, that's cool. So he gives me this egg. <laughs> and and then he's like, what else? What else can I give you? What else? And I was like, seriously, like, Look, man, you, you, you talked to me for like 40 minutes. Uh, I'm very, very appreciative that you took the time to do that. Uh, it, it, you, like, you, you totally didn't have to do it. So, like, I, I'm, I'm very, very happy that you did that. That's all that I need. Like, it was a very interesting conversation. I, I got to, like, learn a little, a, a lot and got to get, like, a different perspective. And, um... He was like, what What about water? You want a bottle of water? And I was like, actually, you know what? A bottle of water would be awesome. That actually would be pretty great. So I got some water, got this egg, and then I kind of get out of the kitchen. He's like, what about two eggs? I was like, you want to give me two eggs? He was like, yeah, I'll give you two eggs. And I was like, ah, yeah, okay, I'll take two eggs. So I got this bowl with two eggs wrapped up in a fucking, you know, paper towel. Oh, I'm so sorry that a yawn just that big. Um, <laughs> I walked out of there 
I was just so friggin' confused. Because he was so, I mean, he was just like an old man. And he really fucking believed in this God thing, right? And, and look, I'm not there to, to, to tell you whether God is real or, or not. As far as I can see, uh, no. Like, my wife is very spiritual. And, you know, we'll, we'll say, like, God is speaking to us in different ways. And you just have to be open to, to listening to what God says. Because God might not speak the same language that you do, which is why there's Metatron and all this other shit. Um, and to me, it's just like, hey man, you're an omni- uh, you're, you're an omnipotent being, and you can't figure out how to, like, talk to your subjects without making them explode. Maybe you're not that omnipotent, right? And then if you're not that omnipotent, doesn't that take away from the whole thing? Like, that's my thing. If she believes in the fact that God is talking to her, that's awesome, that's great, it's just not my, it's just not my bag, I got a different thing, I, I, I think that we're all responsible to each other, that's, that's my thing, I do believe that, you know, as much as I would like to think that the, the universe is random chaos that just happens to operate the way that it operates, that's, that's that, I, I don't, I think that because of the way patterns exist and because of the, the, the way everything is kind of set, that there is some kind of force in play. I just don't call that force God or give it some sort of anthropomorphic limitation, I think. Maybe limitation is not the right word, but, you know, there, when you kind of add this deity aspect to it, I, I kind of feel like a lot of stuff starts getting flawed and a lot of hypocrisy comes into play. So I'm walking out of the kitchen and he comes over and he, and he tells me that they have this duty that uh, for anyone that doesn't believe, you know, God, God has given, given us the ability to choose and make these choices and overcome hardship. But he's like, because, because God has given people choice, nobody can force you to believe in this God. That's a choice that people have to overcome. But if you don't believe in him and his rules, then um, then you don't get invited to paradise. And then he was like, by the way, all the prophets in these Abrahamic religions, they were all Muslim. And I was like, ah, come on, man. Like, the, everybody says that they're prophets or that religion. You know, it's like the Christians fucking believe all their prophets were Christian. The, the Jews believe all their prophets was, were Jewish. You know, like even Jesus, Jesus was, was Jewish, but all the Christians like, but he had a Christian heart. His heart wasn't Jewish. It's like, okay, maybe we're, maybe we should just fucking let that shit go. You know, I kind of feel like the people, the prophets of the religion were like, hey, I don't know if we need to relegate this shit into a box, but like, just be cool to each other. And then they were like, yeah, but like only if they believe in the same thing as us, right? And they were like, no, like just be cool to each other, like all the time and like learn from your differences. And they're like, yeah, but like when you find out somebody's different, like tell them that they're wrong and try to like convince them that your belief is the right way to do it. And if they don't do it, that they're gonna be condemned to hell and they're pieces of shit like that, right? No, you know, I don't know if you guys are gonna be ready for this for like another couple millennia. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. You're just abandoning us? Stone him, stone that. He can't really be prophet. He can't be the prophet of God if he's gonna leave. This is what we fucking do. Weird experience. Walked out. I walked in. To the Islamic Center. Like nothing in my hands. And left there with two eggs and a bottle of water. And, and some thoughts, I think. Hey, everyone. Uh, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and share it. Uh, these are little clips from a little segment I do called Road Reflections, where uh, I go live on my Facebook page uh, and talk about current events, creativity, uh, touring, what's going on uh, in my life. So if you enjoyed this kind of content, you can go and like my Facebook page and follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Krishmohan. Ha ha. Uh, I'm also performing live stand-up comedy 
all around the country. If you enjoyed these uh, little snippets of sociopolitical commentary, uh, it's very similar to what my stand-up comedy is. You can go to ramennoodlescomedy.com for all of the show dates and tickets. It's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. Uh, and if you want to continue supporting DIY, independent, socially conscious comedy content, you can become a patron today. I don't have uh, any corporate sponsors or any small business sponsors just yet, so at the moment, I am people-sponsored. I'm sponsored by you guys, so you can go to patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha and become a patron today, starting at only $2 a month. You can check out all the tiers and rewards. Thanks so much, guys, and we'll see you soon.